Good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church in Hazlitt, Texas. Today is Wednesday. It is March the 8th. It's time for our daily devotion. We are in the Gospel of John today. We're in the very famous chapter of John chapter 3. We're starting at the beginning, verse 1. So please join me there. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised by my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into the heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. All right, and then our devotion here. <clears throat> Nicodemus was a distinguished member of the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin. He was stunned, shocked, and dumbfounded when Jesus told him the night he snuck in to visit him, he already had been born of Abraham, also must be given another birth to enter the kingdom of God. He sarcastically asked, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? The obvious answer is no. Oh, how the church knows the pains of labor. The... Though the labor is intense, she knows that those who by the water of baptism go through the death of the flesh are by the Spirit born into life in Christ. The labor involved in spiritual rebirth, being born of water and the Spirit, requires the death and drowning of sinful flesh. Yet by it comes access into the church and God's kingdom. God saves you by his Holy Spirit through his Son, Jesus, who died to save you. While all people have a fleshly birth, not all have been spiritually born in holy baptism. Here, by the Spirit and in Christ's church, you are certain of your new birth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All right, so in this chapter, Nicodemus comes to Jesus. Nicodemus is a member of the Jewish ruling council, but yet he's coming to Jesus because he is curious about Jesus. You know, the rest of the Pharisees have this reputation for being antagonistic towards Jesus. Nicodemus has some openness, and uh, we, we hear about him twice in John's Gospel, here in John chapter 3, and then again in John chapter 19, when he's helping Joseph of Arimathea um, take the body of Jesus down from the cross to bury him. Now, Nicodemus gets into this exchange with Jesus about being born again, and as the commentator points out in the devotion, you know, the, the, the Jewish people thought of the time that they were born of Abraham, now, John takes this to task in John 1, 12 to 13 of his gospel when he says that we are children, meaning we Christians, are children born not of the flesh, 
nor of human decision, nor of a man's will, but born of God. And the Jewish people thought that if they were born of the flesh, meaning born in the lineage, as a descendant of the tribe, not of the tribe, but, but of the lineage of the descendant, um, as one of the 12 tribes that had descended from Abraham, then they would have um, the equivalent of salvation. They would be God's favored people, and uh, they would uh, enjoy a, a life after death. Now, Jesus comes along to, to Nicodemus today and refutes that and says, well, you cannot be born of the flesh. The flesh is, is of the flesh. You must be born of the Spirit. And the way that you are born of the Spirit is through holy baptism. It is through um, the washing of the water and the word, as, as Jesus points out today to Nicodemus. And uh, we know from, from yesterday in the First Peter chapter 3, verse 20 passage, that baptism now saves us. It, uh, and we know from Romans chapter 6, 1 through 6, that it unites us with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, you can grow up and lose your faith by renouncing your baptism, not believing in what was given to you in baptism, and, uh, and become an unbeliever, right? We do say that. But uh, baptism does have the power to save, and it does impart you with the Holy Spirit and with um, a faith relationship with Jesus Christ. So that uh, you can trust in your baptism, you can trust in what was given to you in baptism and in the power of baptism, um, that baptism does what it says and that it puts the name of God on you and marks you as his very own child. And, and so this just continues with the theme of water that we're hearing about during the season of Lent and uh, also talks about how, uh, you know, the old ways, the old covenant understanding of things of being born in the lineage of Abraham was not really something that was going to guarantee salvation. You know, even in the Old Testament, you were supposed to be born of the faith of Abraham, meaning that Abraham believed in God, as we hear in Genesis, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and, and that's what faith does to us and for us. Um, but the Jewish people had come to evolve this understanding that as long as they had this birth where they could trace their genealogy back to Abraham, they were good. And, uh, and Jesus is, is coming today. You know, there are other parts in John's gospel where Jesus says that out of these stones, um, he can raise up, God can raise up children from Abraham, basically negating any kind of claim to Abrahamic related salvation just by way of your birth, right? So it's being born of water and the spirit, being born of faith, are being born into faith, as Jesus uh, states for us today. All right, let's continue now as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, so it is Wednesday. We're having our midweek Lenten service this evening at 7 p.m. Uh, our, our theme hymn tonight is going to be A Lamb Goes Uncomplaining Forth, written by the very popular hymn writer Paul Gerhard. So we'll hear about his life and uh, what went into writing this hymn. Join us at 6 p.m. if you would like to come for the uh, Midweek Lenten Supper. Let's see, tomorrow being Thursday, we have Mahjong happening at 10 a.m. Oh, sorry, backtrack. Choir practice tonight at 7.45 p.m. after the service and youth night also happening at 6 p.m. Uh, and then Mahjong tomorrow. And then men's breakfast is happening this coming Saturday at 8 a.m. with elders to follow at 9.30 a.m. And then council meeting is happening this coming Sunday after service. There is no confirmation. There is no youth confirmation this Sunday after service. However, um, we have decided to make this coming Sunday the 12th, the spring break. So no confirmation this Sunday, but we will resume on March the 19th. So coming back from break. Um, all right, everyone. Um, we do ask you to continue to, to pray for Deaconess Elizabeth as she contemplates the call that she has received to serve as a kindergarten teacher up in Hamlin, Illinois, and uh, ask that uh, 
uh, you know, if you would like to reach out and, and speak with her and, and uh, pray with her or, or pray for her, uh, I'm sure she would be appreciative of, of all of this. And uh, she is going up there this coming weekend to um, um, get a better understanding of the ministry at St. Paul. So we'll be in prayer for her um, as we continue to, to worship here in, in Hazlitt, Texas. All right, the Lord bless this the rest of your Wednesday. We hope to see you tonight. Um, and uh, if not, then please come and, and visit with us on Sunday. All right, God bless the rest of your day.